the war tales hey what's up everyone welcome to another war tales beginners strategy guide in today's video i'm going to be talking about 10 things i wish i had known before playing war tales so hopefully if you're starting a brand new campaign that these little tips will help you along your way in having a great campaign all right, first on the list is smooth talk and fast training. Now, this is something I want to correct from what I had said in a previous video. Smooth talk just never really appealed to me all that much. Recruitment cost of companions reduced by 10%. I just felt the points were better spent elsewhere. However, unbeknownst to me, smooth talk unlocks fast training, which gives the bonus new recruits gain one aptitude point which is basically a bonus level so before you recruit anyone you want to unlock fast training because you want to take full advantage of this and this is definitely something that i wish i had known before playing war tales next on the list we are going to talk about a new recruit so a couple of details you want to take particular close attention to when recruiting new recruits and down here this is something that escaped my attention the traits so your new recruits will have potentially positive and negative traits so this is something you'll definitely want to keep an eye on and make sure you recruit companions who have those positive traits and the other thing that you want, really want to pay attention to for your new recruits is you want to try and recruit characters with willpower over 15 already this way you can spend most of your aptitude points on the skills that are really important for them um you know critical hit dexterity uh for your rangers basically uh, a little bit of movement and stuff like that um so if you're recruiting new companions with willpower 15 you don't have to waste aptitude points on boosting up their willpower past 15 and the reason you want willpower of at least 15 is because the first time a companion dies in battle they won't actually die if they have a willpower of over 15 so a very important trait to have so um yeah that's basically it keep an eye out for willpower and keep an eye out for those positive and negative traits. Sticking with the recruitment theme, there are actually a handful of companions that you can recruit. I don't want to say for free, but uh, for very low cost scattered throughout some of the provinces. So uh, Hackard here is just one such of those characters. He, he killed everyone. A real madman. If we I heal him. Thank you. I still can't believe that Ricky used us as bait. He was the one to blame, not us. If he hadn't killed that little girl to steal her necklace, her father wouldn't have fought back, and my friends would still be alive. Take me with you. I have a score to settle with that traitor. All right, all it takes is a heal potion, or a medicine, rather, and we can actually recruit Hackard to our party. So there's a handful of guys they can recruit in the different provinces maybe i'll do a video covering exactly every one of them but it's definitely something nice to know that there's a few companions out there that you can get for relatively low cost so not only are there special characters that you can recruit throughout your campaign but you can also recruit animal companions there are all types of animals that you recruit can recruit all it takes is engaging them in con combat lowering their health below 50 percent and then sneaking behind you have some rope in your inventory you'll have the option to be able to actually capture them so not only are these companions great to have in a fight in a scrap uh, they can really help out uh, you can also equip them with various things there are collars to increase their damage or uh, other stats you can put the saddlebags even on the wolves or if you want to get around the map faster if you've got a whole bunch of animals in your group you can put the horseshoes on there so uh, definitely something i wish i had known 
for my first playthrough. The animals, not only do you get attached to them, but they are definitely good in a fight and they can help you carry a little bit more gear or get around the map a little bit faster. Moving on to something of a more practical nature, you can actually repair your armor you can use my anvil. at I the can armory. Uh, this is going to be a lot cheaper than using your raw materials and, and this will also allow you there. to build up Good a good you. supply of your raw materials and then you can also heal yourself at the apothecary as well heal any wounds My at the apothecary can heal the most uh, which again is usually there. much cheaper I than using you your medicine uh, doing this whenever it's practical whenever you're nearby town will allow you to build up your supply of medicine and uh, raw materials as you can see i've got plenty of ingredients for more medicine built up over time i mean there are obviously going to be situations where you need to use a medicine while you're out in the field but anytime you have the opportunity to repair that armor and heal yourself in town it's usually a good idea because it's a little bit cheaper the next thing i wish i'd known is that some weapons are actually upgradable. We visit the Brotherhood Training Grounds carry their weight, and talk to the to Headmaster the here. Uh, it gives you the help you with that. option to upgrade some of your weapons. Now you have to unequip them from your companions in order to do the upgrade. But usually these are the purple weapons. But there are a handful of the yellow weapons that are also upgradable. Uh, these weapons you'll definitely want to hold on to because they are usually quite powerful and quite useful during your uh, during your campaign and the if way doesn't carry that weight, you can uh, tell whether or not an, an item is upgradable there. is it'll For say price. uh near the bottom there in blue dagger upgradable level seven required so it'll tell you the level that's required to use it the level that it's at at the top there and yeah just a very useful piece of knowledge to know because um, a lot of these weapons have special abilities that you can't get on weapons that you actually forge so you'll definitely want to hold on to all the weapons that you can upgrade and make the best use of them as possible all right since we're still at the brotherhood's training ground this is a good place to demonstrate the next thing that I want to talk about, which is stealing. Stealing in War Tales is incredibly overpowered. Whether you're stealing valuable skill books or stealing items for resale, there are just so many different ways to go about stealing in the game. You can steal food and petty goods and keep a low profile, keep your wanted level under 100, or you can steal things sell them to the uh, bandit camps or you can launder the goods and sell them for full price uh, there's just a lot of different ways to go about stealing but the short of it is if you're not stealing in war tales then you're not playing at the maximum all right next on the list is prisoners so not only can you capture bandits and sell them to the prisons but you can also capture refugees and bring them here to Ines for a tidy Come little profit this is something that i definitely wish i had known i believe i in my first playthrough i actually fought with Ines when in actual We're fact you can um, Come along, you bring her refugees people. for her labor camps i guess <laughs> Um, it's a little, recruiting. yeah, a little bit of a moral conundrum, but early people. game, uh, this is a great way We're to boost the... your income, Come boost your influence, you and Into boost your uh, your wood supply, which is all stuff that you really need in the early game. So I uh, definitely wish I had known that you can pick up those uh, refugees and the prisoners as well, the bandits. It's a great way to supplement your income, especially in the early game next on the list is camp weight you notice here your carrying capacity weight in your inventory and you also have a camp weight so all of your gear all of your equipment that you build for the camp 
actually has a bit of weight as well. So this is something that you definitely want to pay close attention to because if, if your camp is starting to get a bit cluttered with equipment and gear and you're finding that you're not using things, what you can do is you can uh, place it back in your inventory There we go. And then you can take it to your local traveling post and store the gear there uh, just to get the, uh, you know, make a little bit of space in your in your camp. And yeah, you're pretty much good to go. So definitely good to know a little bit more on the practical side. But oftentimes you'll find that there are certain things in the camp that you don't necessarily need. And you want to save that camp weight, travel a little bit lighter, clear up the clutter in the camp. That's, uh, yeah, something that's available for you to do. The final thing that we're going to talk about today is happiness. Your troop's happiness evolves over time. Make sure it remains positive so companions don't leave the troop. So uh, if you go to minus eight happiness, a companion will want to leave your troop so you want to definitely avoid that at seven your maximum valor points increases by two during every rest and at 15 the experience gained in combat increases by 20 percent so i definitely want to take advantage of those and then beyond that any gain above 15 grants you six per happiness point so six influence per happiness point so um, happiness is essentially the best way you're going to increase your influence, which is a currency that you'll certainly want to take advantage throughout the game, the game. And then on top of happiness, we do also have personal relationships with your companions. So your companions can build relationships. The, rela the relationships between two companions ranging from hatred to love can evolve depending on their interactions. So this depends on their interactions within the camp and also their interactions during battle. So as you can see, we've got um, we've got the different relationships. I'm not sure exactly um, how this uh, how this affects things. Um, um, I, I think mostly the biggest effect for the for these relationships is during the post battle or post rest comments uh, or dilemmas rather. Uh, where um, you get various uh, various options. You can often increase the relationships, increase the bonus of relationships, but there will also be options where you can share rewards with your close companions. So Comrade here, <laughs> Comrade the Miser, he's not he doesn't like a lot of people, and he's not well-liked either. So he doesn't get to share a lot of his, um, his stuff with uh, close companions. But uh, definitely something nice to know. That you have, uh, it's yeah, it, it's um, it's a nice touch to the game. I think it adds a little, um, a little bit of flavor, a little bit of um, a nuance uh, to the game, and yeah, just it makes you really want to care about your uh, companions a little bit more. But uh, this is who I was looking for, Hypatia. Hypatia, everybody loves her. Uh, she's got great relationships. Best friends gain bonuses when they interact in the camp or in combat. So there you go. Uh, that is the bonus you get if they become best friends. Well, um, I think that's uh, just about all I've got for you guys today. I hope this was at least a little bit helpful. I know it's, you know, some very basic stuff, but I think it's fundamental, uh, fundamental things for a successful campaign and just good to know um, you know when you're starting a campaign a lot of this stuff you know it can be a little bit overwhelming with all of the different um, mechanics and the different stats and things like that so hopefully this laid out a little bit of some of the things that you really should know going into one of your first campaigns so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again soon